action choices, mm. trying to essentially hack into our automatic reactions to bypass our action choices and to put us into auto mode rather than critical thinking mode in ways that are harmful to us is manipulation. And those two pieces, I think, define for us what manipulation means in the digital age. I wonder if there is a way of saying the degree to which I can know you better than you know yourself, which is to say I can predict you better than you can predict yourself and hence change your actions, is the degree to which I need to be in a fiduciary relationship to you. Mm -hmm. That is to act in your best interests just like a lawyer knows more about how to exploit like your lack of knowledge, like they have to be in a fiduciary relationship that any of these technologies, you can sort of get a degree of how much better they can outcompute you. Right. And hence they should be bound to that fiduciary. Yeah. And that's then what brings us back to this question of how do you align incentives to make right. that happen? Like I don't want to be on my screen more than 10 minutes today. Right. And then there are technologies and techniques designed to hack into my automatic actions in my brain, my cognitive biases and heuristics that I operate within, overriding whatever my desires are, who I've committed myself to. So how do we change business models and align incentives in society so that people do act in a fiduciary responsibility position where not only have these technologies revealed new insights, but they've put them in a position where the incentives need to be to enable human flourishing, not diminish human beings. Yeah, I guess that gets to one final question. I think there are some people that would argue we have to use this kind of neurotech. There's no choice because if we're going to compete with AI, we need to do it. We need to augment ourselves. Well, I mean, that's as if AI is inevitable, as if the race that we have created is inevitable, and as if we have no choice, and it's this like path dependent. So I first question the idea that we have created the need for us to compete with something that we've created yeah. and whether or not there are appropriate guardrails we can put into place. But the second is, look, I'm imagining a more hopeful world, a world in which we use the technology to gain insights about ourselves, and we use the decoding to reclaim control over technology that we have allowed to control us. I think smuggled into the that we can choose is that it's not individual choice. As we're sort of saying, like you may be forced to use this technology yeah. in the same way that I was uh, very hesitant to ever upgrade my phone to the ones that use like the face unlock. And then I stuck with an old phone that used my thumb and eventually I couldn't buy a phone anymore that did that. Your like existence becomes obsolete if at some point you don't assimilate the technology. Exactly, like technology controls the means of social participation, right. and social participation is absolutely necessary. So when you say it's up to us to choose, it's not individual choice. It's it's really a reforming of the incentive landscape yes. that our society runs on that determines like yep. which direction the technology goes. Yeah, and I think. We can start with human rights. That automatically puts pressure onto incentive systems to actually align. But we have a massive power imbalance right now between individuals and tech giants that have set the terms of humanity. We need to reformulate that. And that fundamentally means stopping and saying, how do we realign incentives to be human-centered flourishing rather than human-centered diminishment? And if used in that way, rather than the way that some transhumanists talk about it, which is increasing through synergistic brain-computer interface, the augmentation of humans, if instead we use it as a way to study ourselves and to understand our brain health, our brain actions, the ways in which our cognitive biases and heuristics are tapped into, and reclaim control and cognitive freedom, then I think we actually can compete well with AI or any other technological system because we enable human flourishing. We enable humans to expand rather than diminish. It depends on how we use the technology. If we use the technology to further addict us and automate us, I don't think we compete. I think all we do is give all of our brain activity to AI to be able to improve the systems to outcompete us. If we use it as a way to reclaim what it means to be human, I think the potential for humanity to have a kind of golden age of flourishing is possible. Nita Farahani is the author of The Battle for Your Brain, Defending the Right to Think Freely in the Age of Neurotechnology. 
She's a distinguished professor of law and philosophy at Duke University, where she teaches in the law school, chairs the bioethics and science policy program, and she serves as the founding director of the Duke Initiative for Science and Society. From 2010 to 2017, Nita worked on the Presidential Commission for the Study of Bioethical Issues, which she was appointed to by President Obama. Your Undivided Attention is produced by the Center for Humane Technology, a nonprofit working to catalyze a humane future. Our senior producer is Julia Scott. Kirsten McMurray and Sarah McRae are our associate producers. Sasha Fegan is our managing editor. Mia Lobel is our consulting producer. Mixing on this episode by Jeff Sudakin. Original music and sound design by Ryan and Hayes Holiday. And a special thanks to the whole Center for Humane Technology team for making this podcast possible. Do you have questions for us? You can always drop us a voice note at humanetech.com slash ask us, and we just might answer them in an upcoming episode. A very special thanks to our generous supporters who make this entire podcast possible. And if you would like to join them, you can visit humanetech.com slash donate. You can find show notes, transcripts, and much more at humanetech.com. And if you made it all the way here, let me give one more thank you to you for giving us your undivided attention.